Hey, Brian. Carlos, great to see you. Thanks for having me. I love that you're joining me for this special, and it's really interesting when I think about where we are now. It's hard to believe it's been over a year since George Floyd's murder. When you think about over the course of the last year, what are your big takeaways? I realize that's a big open-ended question, but it's a big open-ended time. So what are your big takeaways when you, no. when you reflect back? I agree, I agree Carlos. Carlos. Look, it's a, I know it's a, a, it, it may be a tough question, but it's the right question. We all personally and professionally have tried to reflect in some way over the last 12 months, make our own observations more than ever. As I reflect, you lay that next to a social and racial awakening that we saw live on TV. And we all kind of reacted to that differently. But in many ways, we all re reacted with fear, with frustration, in some kind of certain cases, anger. And you fast forward a year, I think we still, in some cases, are processing that. As a leader and as a father, a son, a brother, a husband, there's other steps that I know I've tried to take to make sure that we don't miss a moment. And we don't allow that this moment to get away from us without learning and being a better version of ourselves as leaders, as human beings, as companies, and ultimately all having an insatiable appetite to create equitable opportunities for others. Talk to me a little bit about, about you and, and your thoughts on it in this moment, kind of self-reflecting as well. And I'm kind of thinking about how has it hit me all that has transpired over the last 18 months. Where's the last year plus left you personally? As I reflect as a black man, it has hit me pretty hard, right, Carlos? I don't even think I was my best self in 2020. I was probably a lot more emotional than I typically typically am. And so I, I think that all weighs on us. And, and so, you know, we have to find that place to renew so that we can be our best selves as leaders. All of those things that make us who we are, um, like this is a time to make sure that we don't miss the moment, but we find that opportunity to personally renew so that we're well positioned to move forward. What have you turned to over this last year, either to get through, to make some sense of it, to develop some ideas? What, what, what has fed you or sustained you or sparked you or provoked you over the last year? The connectivity with my, my, my loved ones, my family members. But the other thing that was a bit of renewal for me was still public service. I care immensely for youth and education. And I sit on a couple of boards around there. It's funny, Carlos, going to help students and young adults really achieve their dreams and help them get excited and inspired about the future and know that this is just a moment in time that could frankly be a catalyst for the rest of their lives. Talk to me about Chase and give me something that you think you are doing well or you're doing better because you know everyone who's watching this is going to be skeptical if what's something that you're either currently doing well or that you feel like you're genuinely on a path to doing well. Inside our firm. We want to focus first. Like, what could we be doing for our own employees? We have 250,000 employees around the world creating upskilling and upward mobility opportunities for our own employees, our own colleagues. I also think we have an opportunity around improved representation at higher levels in the organization. We've got very challenging goals and are going to hold our most senior level leaders accountable to demonstrating progress around representation at senior levels in the firm. And frankly, we're going to hold each other accountable to drive change there. At the end of the day, local execution matters. So as we make big $30 billion incremental commitments, that all sounds good at a really high level. But how does that show up in individual cities? We've talked about that publicly, the transparency and accountability of how we're showing up in local markets to deliver around our diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies. So we're being very intentional around how our local management teams know what their roles are, what they're accountable for, that there's metrics and transparency around how we're showing up in those markets, and that we're working with local human rights groups, civil rights groups, consumer advocacy groups in those markets to make sure we're listening and learning to what they feel are the priorities. Talk to me a little bit about Juneteenth. Um, uh, has that been something that you've commemorated over the years? In the firm. Last year, we started a fairly comprehensive approach to commemorating Juneteenth. We're building on that this year. We learned, right, a number of our leaders, our entire forum more broadly, became more proximate to the importance of Juneteenth, the history that really was the underpinning on why that is such an important day on the heels of two years after 
the Emancipation Proclamation. Why was Juneteenth so important, uh, particularly as it relates to slavery? Like all of those key elements of learning, we're not minimizing that. And we also not only think inside the firm, we have a responsibility to make sure people understand and are aware outside the firm, you're going to see us do a lot more to lean in, uh, to make sure that there is a good level of understanding on the role that Juneteenth has played in American history and what it should do to inspire permanent change around opportunities for everyone as a reminder of what can happen as we lose sight of creating equitable opportunities for others. The black community, particularly as it relates to slavery, there is a direct correlation to do Juneteenth. There are also a lot of other very connected points as to why Juneteenth should serve as a reminder of what can happen as we lose sight of creating equitable opportunities for others. As you think about um, uh, uh, the next year in particular, what will tell you that we are on track and that J.P. Morgan in particular is on track when you talk about sustainability and equity? What will tell you, though, what will be your canary in the coal mine that'll tell you that J.P. Morgan's on a good path a year from now? When we say diversity, equity, and inclusion, we can point to tangible actions and efforts that are measurable, that are sustainable, that are data-driven, and that ladder into the job to be done. Meaning, what have the, what has the community, the consumer, the business owner, the stakeholder told us is the gap around equitable opportunities? We look pretty hard, I would tell you, Carlos, at educational inequities. The purpose of standing up HBCUs, in some cases over 100 years ago, some more recent than that. There was a real reason. There was an inequity, a gap that was being filled. In some cases, that inequity is still there. You look at the achievement gaps of Black students or Hispanic students relative to maybe their white counterparts. Is there an opportunity to close that achievement gap and see all thrive and grow? Another inequity is health. We talk a lot about the disparities in health. J.P. Morgan's thinking about how we lean in and do the right thing around health disparity. You've heard us talk publicly about Morgan Health, which is a strategy that we're going to look at, which will include not just health disparities for diverse individuals, but more broadly, our entire employee population, because everyone deserves an opportunity to stay healthy. Another inequity, um, there's lots of data behind, is income and wealth. The income and wealth disparity is pretty wide. And we point to real evidence of work that we're doing that's tangible and measurable on closing the racial wealth gap. That, that speaks a lot, Carlos, to our $30 billion racial equity commitment. Really get clear on what inequities that we felt like we could play a meaningful role, not just incremental, but more transformation. That's kind of how we thought about equity within J.P. Morgan Chase. And so a lot of our colleagues in the marketplace are starting to think through that same type of rationale. I think you're going to see more companies really trying to lean in and evidence the E in equity. Really appreciate it. We will, uh, we'll see you again. See you soon, buddy. See you soon.